Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror Show, I'm Cecil Laird. I'm in Fuego here. And we are back to do something that we don't do that often on the channel. In fact, I think we've only done one so far on the channel and it didn't involve me, so it doesn't really count. Um, this <laughs> is going to be our premiere <laughs> novel review. <laughs> That's not true. Fuego Almost and premiere, Marcia yes. reviewed the It novel a, a little while back for It Week. You forgot so. about it, sir. I did, I did. But, you know, uh, it's appropriate that if that was our first review, that our second review be done by the son of said gentleman for, yeah, I think they already know what it is because it's already been up on the thing, but it's heart-shaped box, you guys, and Fuego's yes. just proving that he actually has the physical book here. Yes. Um, so you originally used physical books, right? Fuego, is there a story behind this one? Can you tell everyone? Yeah. Who is Joe Hill? What is this book? Why are we reading it? What's the dealio? So, uh, everybody, everybody knows that, uh, I have this program, Hail to Stephen King, if you're, like, frequently on the channel and stuff, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, so, uh, mm -hmm. finally got done with all the King shit, and I was like, what am I gonna read next? Am I gonna, you know, delve into more comics? Am I gonna finally read Meg? Which this man's been pestering me about for a while now, but it's uh, a good movie. No, no, or a good book. Well, don't. Hopefully, it'll we be know, movie. yeah, we'll see about the movie. But uh, when I read that uh, uh, Mr. Joe Hill, who is the son of Stephen King, Joseph Hillstrom King, uh, he didn't want to bank on his King name, you know, to get his foot in the door, which I think is pretty dope. And the fact that he had so many just rejections and stuff, and finally broke through in the UK with his uh, 20th Century Ghosts anthology collection, but his first uh, largely published novel, like, worldwide, was Heart Shaped Box. So, Stun of, stun of Stephen Sting. Son of... One more time. Stun of Stephen Sting. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> the son of Stephen King finally broke his way through in the mainstream, like, worldwide with this book, and it's a... It's very cool because of the fact that uh, well, Heart Shaped Box, everybody probably immediately thinks of the Nirvana song, and that was obviously the intention here, especially since the sections of the book are broken up into different, like, titles of popular songs as well. You've got Heard from Nine Inch Nails, you've got Alive, presumably, by uh, Pearl Jam, and so it's cool the way they it's broken up, but the story is music-related. It's about an aging goth rock star who, he's in his 50s now, but he's not totally like over the hill or anything he still is vastly popular and with fans and yet uh, bearded dude bearded dude long black beard and he goes by the not real name of judas coin that's right most peeps call him jude i'm a little familiar with this using a different name than your birth name thing really and, uh, yes. you weren't born jaime and fuego as my dad would say that's not on your birth certificate <laughs> yeah. but um yeah so so he's this aging goth well-respected well rocker though who lives out in the middle of nowhere in uh, uh oh boy is he in georgia i'm trying to remember no 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 but he's so um, that's right he's in upstate new york right the girl that he is dating he calls georgia because uh, this aging rocker has a uh, affinity for the young goth girls, and they they have it for him too, obviously, because he talks throughout the book about just all the different women that he's, he's had. He's had a revolving and... stable of goth girls that he basically just names after the states they're from because mm -hmm. that's easier for him yeah, than trying to remember all the personal details. And also, so as not to get as attached, because Correct. he basically says that they but they all had expiration dates, and he always was pretty well aware of this. He doesn't want to get too attached and. He was married and divorced, and this has pretty much been his M.O. Mm -hmm. since his divorce. And uh, the divorce actually ends up going down because of one very kind of crazy plot detail, which ties in with the premise and the yeah. fact that he is a collector of just nasty things, I guess you could he, say. He's, he's and, built and he's, his career on his affinity for the dark mm -hmm. and the macabre. Yes, uh, exactly. And so his, he has an assistant by the name of Danny, yep. a gay assistant, um, oh, did you think that? Oh, they yeah. He he no. he mentioned it at one point. Uh, okay, he did. No. He did. Yeah. He, um, Maybe it's a part that I was just kind of doing a little more skim, and I just didn't. I mean, he was enthusiastic, and he really looked up to. No, he mentioned at one Jude point and, that yeah, yeah, he he was. Um, okay, uh, so that's why he always bonded and became friends with the the, the girls that he was with. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Um, it's so, been a couple weeks now since I've read it, and uh, you know, anyway. Um, but sir. and 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 to be all transparent. Fuego read it, I listened to it. Yeah. 
So um, that's part of what I want to discuss, because this mm. is the first time I've only listened to a book. Mm. Uh, so uh, I don't I, I'm wondering if that affected me on this. So we'll, we'll find out when we get further in. But yeah, um, so, but, so yeah. he has all of these things, some of which he's purchased himself that his assistant has helped him locate and whatnot. And then there's other things like the thing that in his marriage that fans will send to him. And minor early spoiler, um, there's a fan who was a cop, a if cop, I'm not right. mistaken, who uh, basically took into the took into evidence a snuff film of a couple of drug addicts getting killed, and gave it to Judas. Gave it to Judas, and for whatever reason, he watched it once, and as opposed to getting rid of it, he held on to it. Mm -hmm. And his wife finds it, and that's what ends his marriage, and sends him off into this kind of spiral of. His, a couple of his bandmates dying, so all he can really do is solo shows here and there at this point. He's no longer married. Uh, all of this he, gets revealed, <clears throat> like, over the course of the book. It's not yeah. all, like, front-loaded. Like, yeah. that's that's something we need to talk about is the structuring. Yeah, and that's something which is where I felt the similarity of uh, of Joe to his father in the fact that Caleb... We'll, we'll, we'll get into that. Let, yeah. we'll, let's well, finish with the story first. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. And, and, we'll do, and, we'll try, I'm trying okay. to keep it yeah. sort of like our movie reviews, you know? No. So we'll do story and then structure okay. and things like that. Okay. Well, we usually start with overall impressions, don't we? True. That's yeah. true. Did yeah. we not? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Your overall impressions? I loved this book. I thought it was awesome, and it has me at the point where I can't wait to read everything Joe Hill, and I'm going to because he's you know he's only been going for about a decade now, and so uh, does it I, excite you the same way that King, early King excited you when you started reading no, it? No, it's not at that level, but okay. it's it's distinctive and different enough, and yet I can see some just as a musician myself and a lover of music and just. Some of the names that they drop of you know people he was friends with. He's backstage at a Trent Reznor concert when he meets the girl who ends up kind of becoming his undoing to some degree, or mm -hmm. at least that causes the conflict that mm -hmm. ar arises in the book. And so, uh, is he as good as his dad? No, but he's pretty damn close, and a lot more so than I was anticipating him to be. Because I thought the Lock and Key stuff was pretty damn good, but I only read the first you know the first trade and mm -hmm. nothing beyond that. And this is the first real like long form stuff that I've read from him and. Yeah, I, I can't wait to get in the horns, especially Nosferatu with Christmas Lane, because that actually ties in with the King multiverse. The Crimson King is mentioned, and I don't know how heavy-handed it is, but uh, as, as Wikipedia told me, yes, there's connective tissue where, I mean, he was supposed to basically be the heir apparent after his father had the accident. He basically told me, he's like, Joe, if I can't finish this series or I, I don't recover and, you know, I, I, I don't make it after this, this injury, I want you to go off my notes and finish writing the Dark Tower for me. Wow. You know, so I can see that that's maybe, and, and he's probably a big fan of his dad's stuff, you know, because you see a lot of similarities. They've worked together before on In the Tall Grass, which was awesome. I can't recommend that enough. So, yeah, overall impressions, I can't wait to go through the entire uh Limited, but uh, I'm, I'm excited at the concept of all of the stuff that he has out. For me, the overall impression is um, I liked it, but I wasn't blown away. I found a few things that were bothering me and um, uh, a sort of lack of scare factor that I was hoping I would receive. But I think that might be one of the culprits mm -hmm. of the audiobook format. Yeah, read by Stephen mm -hmm. Lang, right? Which is interesting. So he was the the bad guy in Avatar, right? Uh, and in Don't Breathe. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, well, actually, well, then you could argue either way if he was the bad guy or not, because he's fighting people. Trying he to rob he, him. he <laughs> did a great job. Like, well, I, I think that should be a section two. We'll talk yeah. about the actual audiobook as a separate yeah. part. So, and, and he actually read in the Tall Grass as well, and he's done. Okay. Uh, he's done lots of uh, King and lots of lots of other stuff. He apparently has a career on the side as as doing, it makes sense. He was really voice talented, voice. really yeah. talented. So uh, overall, though, I thought it was a different but not altogether unique take on ghost stories. Mm -hmm. um, I thought, in fact, I thought a lot of it was a little bit derivative, um, but but it was still entertaining. It, it wasn't as scary as I was hoping it would be. It wasn't as unique as I was hoping it would be, uh, but maybe I was just building it up too much because I've read all of Lock and Key and I love it. It's one of my favorite comic series of all time. Hmm. So I know what he can do. And this just felt like such a, this, like Lock and Key is like full force hill. Hmm. This felt like a stripped down um, like training wheels version of hill. 
where it was just like you it is such a small intimate story that it only really involves about six characters or so Mm -hmm. Um, which is interesting in its own right but it also creates an inherent lack of stakes um to me like there Mm -hmm. there i didn't and and here's another thing that when we get to the story we'll talk about why the stakes were not there for me i identified enough with the two leads that um I mean, that was enough stakes for me. Was just see, it wasn't for what me. Was gonna happen with so, the two so them. essentially, let's let's use this as a segue back into the story. So, like you said, he's yeah. a collector of morbid things. Yeah, and for whatever reason, he gets an email from somebody that Danny, his assistant, sees, and he's like, and he's like, "Hey, Jude, come in here and check this out." And it's essentially a a suit that is allegedly haunted, like has a ghostly possession like it belonged to, to an, a now dead man mm-hmm. yep and the ghost he wanted follows to be, the suit he wanted to be buried in this suit and apparently it just wouldn't fit him after he died because you know you lose like a certain amount of mass and look too big on him and so uh, yeah the surviving family decided to just bury him in something different left the suit family is now convinced that the suit is haunted and they're like hey we know you enjoy collecting creepy things and whatnot and i i can't remember exactly in the email if they mentioned like my, my daughter is a huge fan of yours no, or your sister so. or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, nonetheless, he just impulsively decides to say, should you know, let's not bid on it. Let's just buy it. Yeah. And a few days later, he gets it, and immediately you can sense that something is amiss and something he is starts. Off. He immediately starts seeing an old man ghost, and I don't want to ruin too much about it, but there's some interesting details that... that I think we can touch upon without yeah. ruining too much, yeah. but there's a really cool beat specifically with the suit when they first take it out of the heart-shaped box mm-hmm. that it comes in, and like a Valentine with, gift, almost. Yeah, exactly. And with uh, Georgia, as he calls her, mm-hmm. his current live-in goth early twenties lady, who, well, she touches the suit and it like pricks her mm-hmm. almost, and like it, there's a pin inside it. Yeah, when they search the suit and there's there's nothing nothing there yeah and then it's almost like it bites her finger and that yeah and that injury carries on through the through the book but oh yeah it gets worse and worse um (laughs) but yeah see that the georgia stuff is part of what i had an issue with so again i mean this is how we can go back and forth between good and bad and stuff to me um he spent so long explaining how he just goes through girls and how he fully expects to just go through Georgia as well. Eventually, mm-hmm. she's going to go as well. Oh, yeah, you can tell that, he's annoyed with her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That that when she is trying to hang on and saying, you know, being that... And this is part of what I'm saying about it being derivative. She's saying, you know, no, I'm, I'm staying with you and all this stuff. You know, sticking to him despite how poorly he treats her. That is stuff we've seen in so many stories before. True, but and the problem that is the when they try and lean in these situations. Though? I don't know. I mean, Maybe this yeah. one in particular, but still, it's, but, it's but basic it's, psychology. But it's mm-hmm. not. It's not interesting. It's not unique. That's what I'm saying. Like it was the, what I expected. The writing isn't that unique. And then the fact that that you know by the end things change a little bit. I he, he spent funny. so long talking about how he didn't want her it's going that when it starts to change it's like i'm not buying it i totally bought it because they're going oh, through hell I together disagree. they're going through a hellacious insane situation together i don't think the hell of it bonds, was played up enough that bonds people i don't think the hell of it was played up quite enough and again maybe it's because i listened to it versus reading it this, i think it would have been way more effective reading and i think i feel like it would have gotten more goosebumps that i think i told you about where he gets an email from the ghost and just what the ghost says to him i mean hearing somebody read it might have been creepy but in a monotone whatever but just sitting and staring at the page and as it just as the font is kind of effed up and oh see that yeah there's of, no font i didn't realize it was a different font or anything oh yeah that's yeah, one thing he, that his dad does too is where if it's like if it's a newspaper clipping if it's a letter whatever it looks handwritten or it looks like it's in a different no, see, type yeah, of text that would have made and, a difference that's the thing there's visual cues to novels that people don't consider yeah. and audiobooks sometimes just can't get it across and hmm. it felt like it was too drawn out for me like well, was, like no, the whole was thing was it was them out. it was them yeah. running you know like driving away trying to escape even though they knew they couldn't and it was like there was some unnecessary ugh. if i'm going to be a, i always try to tackle reviews critically and right. you know, look at them objectively and whatnot i i felt like the book lost some steam in the middle yeah. portion where like you learn more about just george's past and you know when she was like 
dating the much older guy when she was you're learning more about and georgia that. and amanda than you are about anything else going on and that's frustrating yeah it's like he, all backstory and where he goes to but once again that's something that his dad is notorious for is back story city just going so in depth and detail almost to the detriment of pacing mm -hmm. you know to just making these characters as well-rounded and multifaceted and layered as possible so i was intrigued by everything but yet that was where you lost the horror element now it did continue to manifest itself in a couple interesting ways specifically with their dogs and uh yes. just when the ghost tries to attack them the there's uh, it, dog spirit spirit animal versions of yeah, them, that almost of. like separate from the physical animals themselves and are able to combat and ward off the ghost when and because this ghost has so much power because this guy was um he was kind of a hypnotist and uh you know uh, deep into the dark arts and stuff like that while well, part was, of a war yeah when he was really alive he was in vietnam and there's a connection that i don't think we should spoil about okay. why he comes after jude but um yes yes that's a good point yeah it's yeah, something that's that needs rest to be revealed assured, in the book there's a rest lot of the, the, the randomness here. of the suit being sent to him ends up not being as random as you might there's think. something very interesting and deliberate to it and, and I that, was that, that was interesting i thought that was beat. good yeah like that's the thing the this the crafting of the story <coughs> was was really interesting i just thought the, I thought the, all the, the setup, structure was the interesting too but the, the, the pacing was rough the pacing is what was rough that's why i said that the the first hundred the, the first section basically mm -hmm. because that in, in the audiobook did they even say like alive and um wish or uh, excuse me hurt and stuff like that did they because i've noticed because uh with the stephen king uh like read readings that i've done i will occasionally divide between an audiobook and the physical book so i can like keep going on it in my car or mm -hmm. you know when i'm like doing uh you know laundry or housework or whatever and just pop in the headphones when i can't sit down and physically read the book and continue going through the book i've noticed that at least in king stuff i don't know what the case would be here there's often quotes before each like section of chapters that often aren't said by the audio reader uh, yeah, I didn't and there's hear me. yeah and there's uh, just certain chapter break stuff certain quotes i mean just certain things that are needlessly omitted and i i really don't know why but the first the the first like quarter of this book i thought was tremendous in the groundwork that it laid it stalled a little bit in the midsection um i can't say i was as happy about the ending specifically but i can't really I don't want to spoil anything because I want you guys to read this and make up your own mind. But the ending was a little bit unsatisfying. I agree. And uh, so that's maybe one of the few problems that I have. But I, but I still loved it. It was definitely, it was not what I expected initially. It got a little tropey, perhaps, as, as you said, yep. in, in the midsection. It, it just kind of lost its way with additional exposition and explanation because maybe, you know, he didn't know like where it was going at one, exactly, at one yeah. particular point and there's something with a ouija board that i thought was kind of like eh, halfway through the book but uh as a whole just being a fan of music there was so much to love in this that i was able to overlook you know some of the stuff that just didn't work quite as well all right well yeah I, and uh i while i'm complaining about a few things i did enjoy uh a lot of the book i i I appreciate what he was trying to do. I just think he wasn't as successful as he was in Lock and Key. Um, Which I and, haven't read, so I have no basis of comparison. On, at least as far as you, you've gone through the entire... I have, yeah. yeah I have the I, whole thing. I've just done, done the first trade. While now, I, which, while I thought was good, I wasn't blown away by the first the first uh, collection of Lock and Key. I, I thought it was interesting. I love and it. And I'm just like, oh, it's... The, it gets better. Yeah. But, but the... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it's... <sighs> He's got an undeniable talent, but it yeah. just, uh, it, it it faded a little bit for me in the middle of this. Mm -hmm. And I felt a little dissatisfied at the ending, a little like, okay, really? All right, well, I guess if you're going to go that way. But, but at the same time, you know, I'm sure it satisfies a lot of people. Just, I wanted something a little bit more. Yeah. I, I did, well, I did. Well, I can understand the burden of expectation and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. I'm... I'm honestly surprised that this hasn't been made into a movie. I agree. Personally, I mean, they can Although, have a badass, honestly, like, I, I can see why. I like thought about it a couple times. I thought about it a couple times, and I'm like, there's a long, boring middle of this movie oh, if they, they would make trim. it into a middle. They you would, know, trim. A movie they would totally trim it. They so. always do with, I mean, stuff by his father. I would imagine that, I mean, since there's similar sensibilities with his approach to writing, that I would 
I mean, it's not really that long of a book. I want to say it's, it's not... around 400 pages. Let me double check. It was about... Actually, not even 400. It's three. It's 370-something. What was so. it about? I think it was about 11 and a half hours on audiobook. Okay. Um, yeah, it took me... I, I mean... I, I read like the the first day I sat down and read it. I read I, I went through like the first hundred something pages. I just read for like four hours that night. I was I was just like cruising through yeah. it. And then when it got to the slower portion, I'll admit I I took a day off and I read like a Walking Dead comic. Or something. Yeah, I mean you it's. Know? And then I came back and then I, I was just I was almost having to refamiliarize myself with. Oh yeah, that's right. This had happened already, and this had happened yeah. already. There is a point with the assistant, though, where the assistant calls. That's a really that great scene. That I thought scene. was a great, great beat. In That's the book. a great. That would play so well in a movie. It would. It totally, totally would, especially with the way the scene is described and, and him, the way he, and, and him honestly, being on this road and not knowing where he is and stuff. It's just and great. the way Stephen Lang actually delivers it is really amazing. Mm. Uh, uh, credit to Stephen Lang. He he did an amazing job. Uh, at first, I was like, I kind of oh yeah, that's Stephen Lang, and then the rest of it. It didn't sound like Stephen Lang because he was doing such a good job of being Judas and mm -hmm. Georgia and Amanda and, and, and the everyone other stuff that he's and Jessica doing. even he, and and Craddock. He yeah. did a great job of being Craddock. That's the cool thing about a lot of these audiobooks, though, the the King ones that I've done because I've only done like a few Star Wars and a few other ones. Like, it's they're not always. In fact, they're very rarely these big audio dramas like I used to get into in the '90s as a kid. They're often one very talented person throwing their voice in different directions, often doing accents, often, mm -hmm. I, I mean, that just shows the talent of the voice He actor. did that. He did a lot of Southern. Like, it was yeah. really cool. Like, I, well, I don't know how much well, you listen to, but that's the thing. He's originally from the South. Like, you know? what did what did Craddock sound like to you in your head? Craddock? Yeah. Like the ghost? The ghost, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess I did otherworldly, but, uh, you know. That's what's so cool, because to yeah. me, I know he's like, it was like, come on, boy. Yeah. You gotta listen to me now. I told you I listened to a sample of it on Audible, but I yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really cool but because it's only and like, then like it's only a at chunk, one point so. he gets really mad and his southern comes out. Hmm. He's like, "You like him, don't ya?" Hmm. Like it's so cool. Like Stephen Lang did a really good job. Like that's the weird thing. I think having someone deliver it really increased my enjoyment of parts, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it decreased my enjoyment of other aspects. Yeah, I just recently, uh, when I was rereading Dolores Claiborne, I divided it between the audiobook and between the novel. And the novel, Dolores Claiborne, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie with Kathy Bates and Jennifer Jason Leigh. A long time ago. Yeah, I she, can't remember she, it at all. She kills the husband. for It actually has connective tissue with uh, Gerald's game. Gerald's game, game yeah. Yeah, it's, they're, they're both about a father molesting a daughter and stuff. And that's... Uh, but... That actually worked so much better as an audiobook because there's no chapter breaks in Dolores Claiborne. They, it ju it's just constant stream of thought because she's sitting, just being questioned by an officer, but it's just her telling the entire story. And they mention that there's a stenographer there that's taking down everything that's being said. And so the audiobook for that worked so well because it almost was like you were just sitting there listening to the tapes gotcha. of the recording and, you know, of her being. Of her being interviewed, and it's it's really that really good. I highly recommend that audiobook. On a, so, on a tangent. So uh, structure wise, did you like how it was structured? Hard shape box. Yeah, yeah, I did. I mean, once again, though, I'm used slow to, in the middle. I'm but... used to the jumpy, flashbacky backstoryness of his father, and that's where I saw the similar sensibilities. Yeah, because that was yeah. what I was gonna say. Um, the, all the backstory that Fuego rattled off at the beginning of this review was not revealed all at once early on. It was no. revealed in flashbacks yeah. as chapter breaks and stuff like or, that. Or even just like just thinking back to a memory and right. just kind of describing it to, to the reader. Right. You know, as opposed to even hearing Which can be a double-edged sword to me. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to dialogue between the two people and like being full-on flashback, it's just somebody just kind of going through a memory in their head right almost right so, exactly. so so yeah i mean i was used to this sort of approach so i guess maybe for that reason it worked a little bit better for me but i can see how for a feature film uh they would really perhaps perhaps this is why it hasn't happened yet they would really have to make a, a, lot few, to a few significant yeah. alterations yeah. yeah so all right guys yeah that, that, i think that, that pretty much covers it for our review yeah. of heart shape box uh it, it was a it was definitely a worthwhile read um, one of the cool things about the ghosts is that he talks about how 
Um, their eyes are covered in like squiggly black lines that are constantly kind of moving. Yeah, there's, like someone's constantly sort of crossing out their eyes with a marker. There's there's parts where they describe photographs, looking at photographs yeah. and seeing the eyes blacked out and stuff. Yeah, it's, it's really it's really neat. cool yeah. visual. So yeah. so I mean, there was like there was little unique touches that saved the book and made me love it despite the the tropes and you know the sure. the, the pacing problems. I, I'm glad you liked it more than I did. I yeah. am I am. And I do want to read more. It was so, a lot more because of the subject matter though. The fact let that me it was know about a century musician. Ghost the is. fact that it was about a musician. The That's fact that true. It was very deeply rooted in music. Like the scene where he wakes up in the hotel and he, well, and the fact that and he just has a writes. song in his head, yeah, and that's and what his saves hands him. Hands all messed up, and you know he just starts strumming. And well, George... the song in his head is what keeps him sane mm -hmm. at one yeah. point too. Yeah, like, it's George... really cool. And, and Georgia is like, "That's a good one. Who is it?" And he's like, "It's me. It's mine. <laughs> or, it's mine. I wrote it." <laughs> <laughs> I like he's the way he, an, I like the way Stan arrogance. Lang did Judas too. Like he did yeah. a really good job. Yeah, he definitely did the voice on the little snippet that I heard. So. Uh, there was an interesting arrogance about the character that uh, an aging arrogance, you know. Uh, By the way, guys, I think I can play a tiny bit of it for you. Um, so listen up. This is what it sounds like. Oh wait, hang on. Nope, that's not uh, it. That's the wrong link. That is indeed the wrong link. So it is wrong link clicked. Wrong no, key. Not there either. There it is. Oh, here we go. All right. Yeah. Gently on the shelf before she walked out. It's gonna be loud enough. Later, the housekeeper showed with the books it was a mistake jude never bothered to correct and soon enough he forgot it was even there yeah, the ghost the yeah she was staring at her feet as she shuffled along with jude's hand on her arm her bangs in her eyes he wanted to tell her to look wanted to know if she could see him as well but he was too in dread of the dead man to speak afraid the ghost would hear him and glance up yeah yeah, so this is yeah. this is the part where he first notices that the ghost sitting the ghost, in a hallway. The ghost is there, and he's trying not to acknowledge that he actually saw the ghost. So he's like, you know, keep your eyes forward. Don't mm -hmm. don't let him see that you saw him. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's really cool, and that's the sort of that that's just the narrator tone. Yeah. You didn't actually hear him do any of voices right there, but mm -hmm. but it's really good, and that's it's the sort beginning of hypnotic. Of the, book when the book was the best, in, in my opinion, was at the beginning. That was that but, was I think an hour and thirty five minutes in. Yeah, so, so. probably like. Not even a hundred pages. Yeah, anything. exactly. So um, it, numbers, but it's really good, you guys. It's worth checking out. Yes. Just you know, bear in mind the criticisms. It might not be the best book you've ever read or listened to, but it is definitely a great intro to Joe Hill and to see what he can do. Yeah, it was the first major thing that he had published. Aside, I mean, at least here in the United States, that short collection was in the UK before, like we said, and right came out. I came out after after this in the US. Yeah. So. so. Cool. Great stuff, you guys. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. I do plan to do more novel reviews in the future. Um, but, uh, yeah, and keep in mind as this comes out that Fuego is going to be doing what regarding Hail to Stephen King? Well, it'll probably be up already, but... Uh, I don't... No, the, the, oh, the announcement, change. the announcement, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I know this is more a Stephen King thing than a Joe Hill thing, but uh, yes, uh, his father, my Hail to Stephen King coverage is going to be going twice a week in 2018, so look forward to that. It's going to be pretty rad status. There's all kinds of cool topics that we have banked, all kinds of viewer questions that we look forward to covering. So uh, yes, if you like the show, check out the playlist that we've done of all of those episodes. It's Stephen King related videos on mm -hmm. on the horror shows youtube here and uh yes share them and like them with the hashtag hail to stephen king let exactly. your friends know yo exactly so thanks very much for watching until next time i've been cecil laird the rest of us have been jaime and fuego click the link in the description box down below to get access to some merch in the merch store where you can not get this. a show like this yeah that one's this not is just on a there cool but band. <laughs> this is just one of the horror show shirt designs that you can rock if you so choose yes it's really rock. cool obviously we rock love like pennywise everything. we love the new it and we love t public and so we love rob thank you guys very much for joining us and remember Stay scared. Hail to the hill.